Three minutes You're past welcome. the hour now. A big reveal for you at the moment. The Republican National Committee announcing seven candidates have qualified for the second primary debate. And for the first time, right here in America's Newsroom, we can tell you exactly where they will be standing on the stage. So here we go. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis once again center podium. Entrepreneur Vivek Ramaswamy will flank the governor to his left. Former Governor Nikki Haley is on his other side, shoulder right. South Carolina Senator Tim Scott in position four. Former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie in the fifth spot. And on the wings, former Vice President Mike Pence will be stage right. And North Dakota Governor Doug Burgum will be stage left. And there you have it. It all goes down tomorrow night at the Ronald Reagan Library in Simi Valley, California. Dana Perino joins us now, one of the moderators. And you knew all that, didn't you? Good morning to you in Simi Valley. How you doing? Good morning. I did know, but nobody can reveal like a bell hammer. You did a great job. <laughs> well, if I told you we rehearsed it, would you believe me? Uh, no, you don't never need to rehearse. <laughs> right so show us the stage. What do you got out there? Okay, well, here's this is the, where the moderators will be sitting. Um, Stuart Varney gets the center seat because he will be the thorn between two roses. Uh -huh. um, so that's where we will be. And then let me take you over here. So as you just said, this is where the podiums are. Ron DeSantis, the governor of Florida. This is his podium, center podium. I did want to show you and Sandra something. First of all, these don't move, okay? Like you can't bring them down, I don't think. So I'm going to show everybody why I could never run for president. This would be me. <laughs> with, a po with a microphone that never moves. So for anyone ever asking if I'll run for office, the answer is a resounding no. <laughs> if we can get you one of those little apple boxes, as we call it. Underneath uh, your feet. Dana, the, 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 the stage is set, and it looks fabulous, and you do yeah, as well. And we're super excited for this. Can you give us a little wow. insights to your preparations? Well, it, one of the things that I did, I had this, like, blank canvas. Any issue, any idea you could come up with. So, of course, as Bill Hammer knows, I overprepare and I did. So now we're just narrowing it down because mm -hmm. you have seven candidates here and you have the rules and who gets to answer what when. And we're, we're working on all of that. But I do think that there's just a collective anxiety in the country. And Sandra, mm -hmm. you cover it on America Reports, we cover it on America's Newsroom. Our audience knows it well. There's an anxiety about the state of the country the state of the economy in particular and how that just feels like everyone's being nickel and dime to death all the time. And not only that, but they find that their grocery bills just are not going down. So the cost of everything really affects all these other issues as well. How we're going to pay for national defense. How do we deal with the budget? How do we deal with the fact that our education system seems to be in quite a free fall and school choice cannot be the only answer? So all of those issues are amongst the buckets. I didn't mention several of the others. Don't worry. We're covering a lot of ground. I know you. Yeah, I know you will. Listen, it looks beautiful. Um, it, they did a great job. Yeah, and you, you have to consider the setting, um, and you have to consider who it represents. And Bill McGurn wrote yeah. about that today in the Wall Street Journal. I'll quote him in a moment. But he goes back to a speech that Ronald Reagan made. This was October of 1980. It was his final speech uh, before the election, and this is what Reagan said on that day. What our nation needs, what the American people want, is a humane economy, one that sees them not as interchangeable parts to whom unemployment is a temporary inconvenience, but as individual human beings, members of families with feelings, hopes, and dreams. Uh, it's quite profound when you just listen to the words there and you think about the striking auto workers, think about the, 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 the writer striking California. And McGurn writes this, time for zombie Reaganomics. He goes on to say, to dismiss Reagan's thoughts as the product of a bygone era is like dismissing the Bill of Rights because it was written with a quill pen by a man wearing a powdered wig. A Republican presidential candidate who actually read what the Gipper put forward might discover in his principles a more potent and persuasive formula for truly making America great again. Can someone on stage channel Reagan and do it with authenticity and do it with believability, Dana. You know, as the sun just came up over this beautiful location, you remember that the Reagans chose this location for a reason, to reflect who he was and what he meant to the country. And I think that that is a quite beautiful sentiment. And the party has changed quite a bit. But can, does the Reagan movement still run through it? And I think what McGurn is arguing 
the answer is yes. And when you are here as a candidate, I imagine you're underneath Air Force One. You're here in this place that just means freedom, economic freedom, certainly, um, as some of the candidates have talked about, but a feeling of unity. Can he, somebody here bring us together? Polarization is something you hear a lot about. People have this worry about where the country is going. And what you do in looking for a president is somebody who can look farther ahead, not just to the next day, but where are you taking us in the future? So, yes, they have an opportunity, and it will be, I guess, uh, are we 36 hours out? Absolutely, Dana. Such an so. important, an incredibly important moment for voters and for people at home to see those revealing moments from the candidates. And it's going to be great. We can't wait to see it. Uh, Dana, you with your two co-hosts, it's going to be fabulous. Like your message. Thank you. Talk to you a bit later in the hour, okay? Yeah, you, yeah see you, you in a little you're bit. You're not done with us yet. All Thank right? you, Dana. No, Thank not you, yet. Dana. <laughs> All right. Okay. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.